Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and for the month of October, Steve Donahue and I are reading The Vampire Lestat, a novel by Anne Rice. This is our uh, pick for our little book club that we have each month. And of course, Steve um, uh, picked, picked the book, and he picked it because it's October, and this is a, a vampire novel. It's uh, uh, the second novel... In a, in a whole series of novels, and we're skipping the first one, uh, Interview with the Vampire. And I've seen the movie years ago, very, very long time ago, with uh, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. And I thought it was an okay movie, but nothing uh, remarkable or notable. Steve assures me that um, you can start uh, the second book in the series without reading the first one, and also that it might be a better read than the first one. Um, and I've only read about 65 pages. I read up to part two. And the reason is uh, I, I started late and instead of um, trying to rush or anything like that or um, delay, I'm just gonna talk about uh, the very beginning of the book, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, I have to admit, initially, uh, the first, um, the, the prologue, uh, the first 10 pages or so, I found uh, very silly, and I thought if the the whole book is going to be like this, I, I thought I, I might not enjoy it. And the, the reason is um, that there's a prologue. Uh, it says, Downtown, Saturday night in the 20th century, 1984. And we're introduced to Lestat uh, waking up from a long slumber, this vampire that's been entombed for who knows how long, and he's uh, weak, he needs to get his strength back, he's um, eating or drinking, but drinking the blood of little, little rats and things like that. Um, and he comes out in the 1980s and uh, he's he's enamored and uh, dazzled by uh, all the bright colors and the uh, the 1980s uh, fashion and, and the music and very quickly he, uh, he gets this idea that he's gonna uh, start a rock band and I, I, I just found it uh, initially very uh, silly I actually imagined Lestat is um, like Jack Black in the House of House of Rock and directed by Taika Waititi, something like that, where it's uh, a parody of something else. But uh, we then get uh, Lestat's backstory, and when, when that comes in, and we're in the 18th century um, in, in, in France, um, it became much more interesting, and also took away the silliness of, of the initial part. And I'll try to explain um, my thought process. The, the, the great part in the prologue, uh, and the, the prologue is great, even though I found it a little silly. Um, the great part is that uh, Lestat wakes up, he's in the 1980s, he's um, very impressed with uh, the century and the decade, um, meets a band of, uh, he meets a band this group of guys that play music, introduces himself as a vampire, and he's Lestat. And the response is, oh, you mean the character in the book, Interview with the Vampire, which just floors Lestat. And in, in this world, the other vampire, I can't remember his name, the other vampire uh, wrote the book, Interview with the Vampire, as a novel and um, uh, reveals all of the vampire mythology and tells all the vampire secrets and names names including Lestat and so it actually reminded me of um, the beginning portion of Don Quixote part two where in in that world while Don Quixote is uh, bedridden and um, licking his wounds it's revealed that Don Quixote Part 1 was novelized and it was written as a book, The History of the Great Don Quixote. And Don Quixote has, has the book and uh, is reading about his own adventures. And so 
in this book, um, Interview with the Vampires is a, a book that was a bestseller, um, and Lestat is named, and so he tells the, the, the rock group um, that he's Lestat, and that they just think that he's um, being fanciful or um, being odd by pretending to be a character in, in a novel. Um, there are great details, um, the, the, the kinds of things that when you read um, like mythology or um, tales of ghouls and goblins, the, the little details of um, um, the descriptions of creatures or the, the behavior, th things like that. And the one that really struck me was it mentioned that Lestat, Lestat's fingernails were glass-like. And I just thought that was such a great uh, detail, something that you might not really notice, but if you did, you would know that there's something otherworldly about someone that had glass, glass-like fingernails. But instead of uh, staying in the 1980s with Lestat, who wants to have uh, the greatest rock band, <laughs> It's just like Jack Black or, um, or Phil and Ted or something. Um, um, it's, instead of staying there, we, we now go back and we're going to get, I imagine, uh, the rest of the novel is going to be the life of Lestat. And um, uh, so far, reading up to part two, which is uh, about 65 pages in, uh, he's still not a vampire. And so we're just we're just learning about this this uh, young man, and since we've had the prologue, of course we know the title of the book. We we know that all of this is leading up to something which has an eeriness about it, has a scariness about it, and it's in the 18th century France. And I love the descriptions of the French countryside, and especially when. Um, Lestat and uh, Nicholas, who we'll talk about, um, make it to Paris. We get all the descriptions of Paris. And I've read all of these French novels, and so I already have, without ever, without ha ever having been to France, I have uh, that li literary um, um, vision in my mind. And uh, to, to read this and hear... Um, the, the, the names that you would expect to hear, references like uh, Diderot and Voltaire and Rousseau and um, the, the playwrights like um, Racine. Um, and it makes, makes the world feel alive. It feels like a very rich, richly imagined um, 18th century um, France. And Lestat is a part of um, uh, an aristocratic family. It seems like they're um, uh, on their downfall, um, but they, they still have name, reputation. They have, they have a, a, a castle and horses and land. Um, Lestat is one of many, one of many children. He's very close with his uh, mother. His father is um, a brooding, stern, uh, traditional man. And we have a series of episodes uh, which are terrific. And the, the first one is Lestat. Um, well, one of the um, personality traits or uh, characteristics of Lestat really early on that's uh, set in place is that um, fear is not an emotion that uh, comes to the forefront. Uh, he, he's a, a, a man with very little fear, and he's um, we when we meet him, he's presented as this hunter, and he goes off. He's told there's a, a wolf pack, um, a pack of five wolves. Uh, he goes off to hunt them. He's on his horse. Uh, he has um, his guns, the 18th century guns that they had at the time. Uh, he also brings medieval weapons, um, that spiked ball on a chain and then a spiked metal club, 
hanging off of his saddle, and he goes off into the woods, in, into the forest. He's go, he goes up um, with his two mastiffs that have spiked collars. He's raised them since they were pups. And instead of five wolves, it turns out to be eight wolves. And it is this um, graphically described uh, hunt and battle that uh, Lestat on his horse and, the, and, the, and the, the Mastiffs all have with these wolves. Um, the Mastiffs are fighting the wolves. The wolves are fighting back. Lestat is shooting, um, shooting the wolves. Um, the wolves eventually kill uh, the dogs, which is gruesome and sad. Um, Lestat's off the horse. He could hear um, the pained shrieks of um, the, the horse that's now being attacked and eaten. Um, this battle goes on and Lestat comes out victorious. He kills all eight of the wolves and um, <clears throat> makes it back to his home and he's exhausted and traumatized by this. And I said that he's uh, a man with very little fear. He's also extremely sensitive. Uh, he's an, an emotionally sensitive man. Um, it really rounds out his um, uh, characterization. Um, uh, I said earlier I thought of him as this ridiculous Jack Black, Bill and Ted type figure, and when we're learning about his life, um, that um, kind of emotional sensitivity very much reminded me of The, the, the narrator in Sorrows of a Young Birther. Um, just a very emotional man. And he's wrecked by this. And he's laying in, laying in bed and thinking about his dogs that he's raised. And um, there is um, all of the talk going through town that um, Lestat, on his own, went up and managed to kill a, a, a wolf pack of eight Eventually, somebody brings him a fur-lined coat made from the wolves that he killed. Eventually, he um, um, becomes friends with this man, uh, Nicholas. And they, have a, they have a very intimate relationship. And they start talking. And they have big philosophical 18th century ideas about uh, the, the age of secularism and uh, the abandonment of religion and tradition and God and uh, what it, what does it mean to live a good life and what does it mean to live a full life and um, how do you go how do you go um, for your dreams and it, it's by the time they make it to Paris it really feels exciting and aspirational that they're they're, they're doing it um, there's um, conflict on the way Nicholas we find out is. Um, has a troubled relationship with his family. He's a, a violinist, um, um, <clears throat> is an intellectual um, counterpart to uh, Lestat's um, um, emotional sensitivity. And their, their relationship is just um, so well depicted on the page. Uh, their conversations, the importance of long nights full of um, laughing and arguing and talking and um, sharing a bottle and being in a, in a closed quarters and uh, an intimate environment and it just feels very <clears throat> very rich and lively very much like the landscape and the world that's depicted in this um, uh, century in France. Eventually they make it to Paris, and it really feels um, big and exciting, and we're looking through the eyes of Lestat, who um, was dreaming about Paris as this uh, distant, um, almost unattainable location, and there's this really sweet moment when uh, Lestat's mom is dying, and um, everyone knows that he has these dreams, and um, He's a 
kind of talking crazily and having all these ideas and um, uh, there's this feeling that he you know he, he needs to stay he has to stay and his mom's dying and, and her, her dying wish uh, she gives him a purse full of uh, coins says I want you to go to Paris I want you to have your dreams write me and write me in Italian so no one else can read it which is wonderful and um, we, we are reading it as if Lestat is writing it. Uh, this is, um, this is his memoir, so to speak. And, uh, very quickly, um, him, uh, Lestat and Nicholas, uh, they get, they get to Paris. Um, they have a little, uh, ramshack apartment, uh, have odd jobs per performing and working at a, a theater troupe that is uh, less than reputable. Uh, but the first time that Lestat is on stage, he's had dreams of um, the theater and uh, the conversations that he, would ha that he would have with Nicholas were always talking about the theater. Um, and it's it's the moment where, you, uh, where I started just really um, wanting to pay attention to um, how reliable of a narrator Lestat is because his first time on stage, he goes off and he is performing, and it's him and another actor, an actress, and um, the stage, the, the 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 audience can't get enough of him, and they practically have to pull these two actors off the stage to continue the um, the drama, and there's a standing ovation and rapturous applause and. A crowd forms backstage, and uh, the theater director uh, on the spot says, "You're gonna be um, on every on every uh, stage of the week, every night. You're gonna be out." And another actor comes out and says, "No, no, no! You have to hire him with a contract, and you have to pay him." And uh, very much reads the, the way that uh, um, you think things might go, but they don't actually go like that. I, I found it quite amusing. Um, and we see the early success of uh, Lestat as a young man, um, again, counterbalanced with Nicholas, who is not achieving his dreams of being this great violinist. Um, all the while, there, there's this... Uh, creeping of um, the horror element and it comes in the way of um, a, a face in the audience. Uh, Lestat is now uh, performing each night and there's a, a face that he'll keep seeing every night in the audience and he'll look back and the face is gone and it's described as this um, kind of um, pale glowing Partially contoured, deep uh, lines that are that run deep in the face, and it's a floating face, as if um, it's somebody wearing uh, black with a cloak. And he starts having this psychological relationship with this face, and he knows in his soul that this face knows that he killed those eight wolves. And there's a, there's a great moment because uh, he, he decides to tell somebody this. He goes, there's, a fa there's, there's someone watching me in the audience. And they go, well, of course, they're all watching him. Um, so um, those are some of my thoughts, a run through what's actually happening. Um, like I said, initially I thought, well, this sounds like it's going to be kind of silly. And... It's, it's won me over. The, the, the story is, is great. Um, there's um, horror elements that are, that are building. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, where Lestat goes. Of course, um, the, the really exciting thing is going to be uh, the first appearance of a, of a vampire and then his transformation. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm having a great time. I know I'm I'm behind, 
but I think I'm going to fly through this novel. It's uh, a page turner. So I'm uh, really looking forward to hearing Steve's thoughts on uh, the beginning of The Vampire Lestat, the name of the rock band. Um, so let me know if you're reading along. Let me know if you've read it. Um, I'd be interested to know. So uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like, and take care.